I, I found it really helpful that there was such specific guidance, like a percentage over a number of weeks for some of these drugs. Some of them, you know, if you, if you get itchy again, that's one thing, but if you're having breakthrough seizures or your patient is really not feeling well because of how we're tapering, that's a different situation. So having some guidance of which drugs fall into which categories and how quickly can you go or, or in the case of something like phenobarbital, how slow do you really need to go? Knowing we need to taper and knowing how to taper are two different things. So this one was a really helpful article. Yeah, that's a really great point. Um, I find that it's pretty easy to figure out which drugs you need to taper, but then coming up with that specific schedule for a particular patient, that's where things get a little bit more complex. And apparently some things you don't need to taper, like fluoxetine, which I had no idea. Um, and that can make it, that is a conversation I do have fairly often if we're finding that fluoxetine isn't working well and we want to transition to something different. I've always sort of just, all right, well, we'll taper one and then we'll start the other. And th this was news to me. So also a really helpful tidbit. Yeah, who knew? I've been recommending that for my whole career that Fluoxetine is really dangerous if you stop it uh, too quickly, and uh, it sounds like you know that's not not actually the case. And I can change my recommendations, which is really useful to know. And I guess it makes sense too, right? When you think about how the the medication works and the half life, you can do a more rapid taper because that drug just is in the system for so much longer. So when you actually think about how fluoxetine works, it does make sense. <laughs> 